one of the world's worst humanitarian crises is tearing Haiti apart. You can hardly imagine how the capital of a country can be owned not by officials or the military, but by gangsters. But that's the true picture of Proto Pans, the capital city of Haiti. This morning in Haiti, the crisis spiraling out of control. Violence is everywhere in the capital. This chaos forcing thousands from their homes. Why is that happening and who should be blamed? The Latin American country is now plagued by violence and hunger. Around 80% of the capital city is now under the rule of the gangs. The UN Food Agency warned that about 1 million Haitians are on the verge of famine. These armed gangsters have been burning down government buildings, paralyzing public facilities, and ousting the Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who has already resigned and is now stuck abroad. All these outlaws are taking orders from one man, Jimmy Cherizier, known as Barbecue. Don't let the name fool you, Mr. Barbecue is possibly the most powerful man in the country under Haiti's vacuum of power. We are fighting to topple the government of Ariel Henry by any means necessary. Without enough guns to restore order, the country has to seek foreign help to clear the gangsters off the streets. The UN has authorized the deployment of Kenya-led peacekeeping forces, but Nairobi is having second thoughts due to the country's growing violence. Foreign help doesn't seem too helpful at the moment, but as a matter of fact, Haitian people too have very mixed feelings against foreign powers. Because when we look at the country's struggling past, Foreign powers have always been the exact actors that shaped the country's political and economic instability. Prior to its independence in 1804, it had been the most profitable French colony in the Americas. The cost of independence was massive debts to its French masters, which led to decades of poor economy in the country. Then in the 20th century, another big power came in to tap into Haiti's remaining resources, the United States of America. The official excuse for the 1915 invasion was to help restore order, but in fact... And the instability in Haiti gave a pretext to the United States to uh, move in with the Marines. And the first thing they did was to go into the central bank of uh, Haiti, take uh, the reserves of the central bank, put it on a boat and send it back to New York to City Bank. The following US occupation lasted for 19 years, but Washington's influence never left. The notorious dictatorship of Haiti's Duvalier family, former President François Papadoc Duvalier and his son Baby Doc, ruled the country for three decades, from 1957 to 1986. The anti-communist Duvaliers were heavily backed by the US. However, the father and son dictatorship is accused of having poisoned the country with corruption, poverty, and endless crime. Almost all leadership in Haiti has allegedly used gangs to maintain their influence. The US occupation and US endorsed dictators left the country with a gruesome number of deaths. According to a Siong Store research document, the US occupying forces killed several thousand civilians during the occupation. Additionally, Papa Doc was responsible for at least 30,000 assassinations and executions while he was in power. Washington's later military interventions in 1994 and 2004 contributed to Haiti's political turmoil. However, it was the 2021 assassination of President Moise, carried out by foreign mercenaries, that truly left the country in a power vacuum, allowing powerful gangs to continue taking control. What's worse, Haiti's geographic location makes it a constant victim to natural hazards like hurricanes and earthquakes, which could easily cripple the already weak economy. As you know, this has been uh, a long unfolding story. The heart of the story is the suffering of the Haitian people, and we want to see that brought to an end. Good words aside, the United States is now evacuating its embassy staff and citizens from Haiti, and the White House seems reluctant to take the lead in helping its neighbor. A proposed transitional council in Haiti is taking shape, which is meant to bring order to the troubled nation. But its effectiveness will remain in question amidst the overwhelming gang violence and deeply rooted political instability.